handful of lubricant and just one drop of essential lavender oil. Um, I don't like to use too much lavender because it's strong, right? There we go. And the best way I've been finding is to make sure both sides of the hand is, are coated as best you possibly can. So the front and back of the yeah. hand. Yeah, so that as it goes in, you're sliding both ways. And then the objective is just to get as much of this in around the inside of the sheath as possible. Then every single time he drops to pee, he's going to self-clean. And this is water soluble, so it's easily rinsed out with some water. It's like, oh, I better just check things out first. Let's see the yeah, and if you don't want to have it done, Jax, yeah, that's right. this is know. Jax who never needs his hoofs trimmed, so he may well be wow. wanting to take care of things himself. We'll find out. Exactly. All we can do is offer. Offering a possibility, love. It's up to you if you want to say no. Would you like to try? The other thing, too, is he has no idea what I'm up to. What yeah, I get the image of scratches first. Ah, uh, maybe he wants me to do this <laughs> at the same time and film. Well, that's going to be an interesting challenge. Good boy, sweetheart. And there's the picture of cooperation. Now, Good boy. Good boy. Okay, scratches? Sure. You know, even getting it around the entrance, as I say, it's not going to do anything for the bean. Yeah. But even just getting it around the entrance will allow, as he urinates or drops and goes in and out, it'll allow it to self clean. That's right. That's, so. that's the goal. It's very, very dry in here, which isn't a great surprise. And he's got a big, 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 big bean. Big bean in there, Jack. So that came from us. Okay, buddy. We'll work with you. So he's like, stop filming and scratch. So I'm going to do that. It's just snag, no bean. But it certainly came off easily with a little bit of this. Um, and he let you get in there and do it. Because totally. I was scratching his belly and not filming. So we're going to keep doing that. Half of the bean. And so that's pressing against his urethra. Oh, right. It's, it's breaking up a lot because, of course, it's now very lubed, right? Right. But that's a lot to have up against the urethra. Right? Yeah. I think I've got it. Some horses have fantastic manners. Some horses will run you over, kick, bite, body slam you. Um, that's how they say no because they have to shout no. Yeah. They can't I, just quietly walk I away. guess the difference too is between having an owner do what I do, which is I'm paying for two hours of your time. Whatever happens, happens. If nothing happens, that's totally fine. You get paid either way. That's what the horse says. So I, as the owner, can set it up to give everybody full permission to only do what feels safe, to only do what wants to be done, and everyone is taken care of. Yes. And then you get to take as long as you need to feel comfortable to work on halter. And at some points, the horse has told me, put a halter on me. At other times, like if you ever said put a halter, I'd put a halter on, but it's that everybody gets that freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe it's not so much about the halter or not, but that they have a choice. The choice is such a big piece in it, but then there's also our horses have no sense of time. True. 
right? So we, we have to layer in all these human aspects, or do we have to? Yeah. All these human aspects are layered into the sessions. And often a horse has uh, been injured or isn't feeling 100% for whatever reason in their body. And so I'm always called because there's a problem. Right. Right? So that everybody seems to want to have it addressed. And yet that's often when the horse is at the most tender and feeling the most vulnerable. Right. And quite often would say no. Yes. And yet in the end feels better. So. Yes. Pick an answer. Exactly. Exactly. So it's it's interesting because we can say, well, you can put a halter on your horse if the horse asks you to. But if the person has no skill set in listening to their mm-hmm. horse mm-hmm. <laughs> and being able to perceive even in strange, stressful or painful situations what their horse is actually saying then again we're back to well there actually is no real choice because your fears are going to drive the bus correct so it's it's a quite a complex it's a very complex situation matrix. yeah for sure and um so many of my clients are absolutely aware of their horse's bodies they're very in tune with what's going on. They notice nuance, which is wonderful. Um, but not all of us are yet completely immersed in animal communication. Yes. And including me. And it takes a long time. It takes a long time. And then you have to continually check, is that actually what I receive? Is that my own brain? Right. Is that my own fear? Is that my own need? Right. So it's it's never something that's a hundred, well, sometimes it's a hundred percent crystal clear, but more often it's a bit of a, okay, I think this is what you're saying. Let's try. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. That's what you're saying. Or, oh no, that's not what you're saying. Or you said that five minutes ago and now you've changed your mind. <laughs> that's the other thing to, so it's, it is something that you definitely have to practice. Well, I'll tell you a little funny story. I um, met a lady who did some animal communication and uh, one of my horses told her very clearly he wanted sugar cubes, which I've never fed. And so I specifically bought a box of sugar cubes, brought them to him and said, I was told you want these. And he turned his nose up at them. Now, I don't think she was wrong. I thought he wanted to see if I would do it. If you would do it, exactly. Yeah, testing. Right? And Are I, you actually going to listen to me? I was 100% comfortable with the outcome either way. It was pretty delightful. I, I read a story by another animal communicator and she was working with this dog and the dog asked for pretzels, which the dog hates pretzels. But again, it was a test. So they got him a pretzel and he ate it and he never touched pretzels since. <laughs> So it's like, I'm going to test you. And then they gave it to him and he ate it once and then went back to hating pretzels. And he's like, okay, I guess I asked for it. I should do this. Yeah. That's Whereas awesome. your horse is like, and I don't want to eat. I just want to see if you would. I'm just seeing if you'd go to the store for me. And, and people forget as well that animals have an amazing sense of humor and fun and play. Yes. You know. Absolutely. That's part of the joy of spending time with them is their sense of humor. As long as the sense of humor doesn't get too big. Yes. As in body wise. Exactly. <laughs> so let's see. It's quite a bit cleaner and less scaly than it was.